everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in this episode of Astro Chat, I wanted to talk about Rahu being in Taurus. Currently in the sky, we've got Rahu positioned in Taurus. And some time ago, I did a video about this, which you can have a look at. I made some predictions actually about what would happen when Rahu would go into Taurus. And I'm pretty sure on the negative aspects of this placement, I said things like there could be food shortages. I also said that the trend of cancelling people, you know, social media restrictions, people being cut off, people not being allowed to speak. I did talk about that in that video. I think there are a few other things I mentioned. I didn't have time to watch the full thing myself today, but uh, I did have a few predictions. Now, I'm pretty sure one of the things I didn't pick up and I didn't talk about, which I want to talk about now, is the energy of lies. And as I'm looking at culture and society today, I'm pretty amazed at the kind of lies that are floating about in the atmosphere. You know, it's like the atmosphere is thick with lies. So this is what I want to explore in this episode today. And what I'm going to do before we take a look at the energy of Rahu in Taurus for the collective, I wanted to look at how this operates in an individual because some of you will have Rahu in Taurus. Now, this does not mean that you're a liar, not at all. Okay, so please don't think that I'm saying Rahu in Taurus equals lies, therefore an individual is a liar, not at all. We're gonna take a look at that now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the healthy expression of Rahu in Taurus in an individual's chart. So I'm gonna bring up some examples and you'll see just how incredibly talented and creative people are who have this placement. So the first one I'll bring up is Eminem, the rap star. Now, I don't know anything about Eminem's music. I, I haven't really listened to him uh, very much at all. I'm going to bring up two musicians. I'll bring up Eminem and you can see that he's got his Rahu there in the second house. When I started thinking about Rahu in Taurus, it just, I don't know, it just got me to look up all these different rap stars. And I did see a couple having, you know, Rahu in Taurus or um, Rahu in the second house. These are people who are innovative with words and they'll have really creative and unique ways of putting words together. The next example I've got is Amy Winehouse. She's got this beautiful Rahu in Taurus in her first house. So she is the kind of the embodiment of Rahu in Taurus. Now her lyrics are just absolutely sublime. Her music, I know, I've listened to it a lot and I love what she does. And I think she's incredibly innovative when it comes to lyrics and all that kind of thing. I also found the example of Salman Rushdie, innovative storyteller, won the Booker Prize twice. I'm just gonna bring him up on my screen. What did he have? Oh, look at that, Rahu Venus in Taurus in the second house. Okay, so this is a great example of, you know, a, a, a great functioning, healthy, though perhaps maybe some of you will, will find that debatable. Some of you will be like, oh, Salman Rushdie, I, I don't agree. I, I don't like his work. I, I, this is not about like or dislike. This is just about, you know, me looking at this energy and, and when it's functioning well, what can it do? What it really did do for Salman Rushdie was it made him a famous writer. You know, he's an innovative storyteller. He won the Booker Prize twice. It's quite incredible what he was able to do. He was able to innovate with words. I'll take a look at another example, David Letterman, Rahu in Taurus. Okay, so he's a comedian. Look at what he did with words. He was very clever with words and really funny. And I've watched lots of uh, clips of him and things like that. <clears throat> Even though I didn't grow up in America or, you know, I caught up with a lot of things on YouTube that I've watched and really enjoyed. So he's a really good example of a healthy expression of Rahu in Taurus. So let's take a look at how I'm looking at this energy in the collective right now. And why am I saying that it's causing or generating lies in our collective? I do believe that this placement is the source of quite a lot of the lies that are happening in the collective right now. And I'm doing this from the perspective of Saturn and Capricorn. So I'm looking at the top, top, top leaders and I'm looking at culture and I'm looking at 
what's going on and, and we are seeing a kind of negative or unhealthy expression of this Rahu in Taurus energy in our collective right now. I'll give you one example. There are people today, billionaires, leaders, top, top, top people who claim to be philanthropists. Yet during this time of Rahu being in Taurus, they are making so much money. They're not really giving it away. If anything, they stand to make huge amounts of money. Okay, so to me, that's an absolutely massive lie that's happening in our collective right now. So one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to look back in history and see, have we had this before? You know, am I able to go back 18 years and find lies each time I go back 18 years? And you know what? It's pretty incredible because I went back three times and I'm going to show you and each time I didn't have to, I hardly had to do any work. I hardly had to do any Google searching before I found a massive lie. So I'll give you an example, 2002, 2003. So we go back 18 years, Rahu in Taurus. What did we have then? We had weapons of mass destruction. Okay. That's a really interesting one because I think at least culturally, if not historically, that is now acknowledged as a massive lie, you know, that it, it, it was completely wrong. You know, that a small dusty country in the Middle East or whatever, they did not have weapons of mass destruction, you know. I mean, people at the time knew that and were saying that, but weren't being listened to. That's okay, that's, that's how that time was, that's fine. Um, well, maybe it's not fine. I know, truth tellers are having a tough time in these, in these Rahu in, in Taurus times, it, it's very difficult. But, Let's go back another 18 years. Let's see, can we find another one? Okay, let's, let's go back, 1983, 1984. I Google searched, you know, what was the big event, 1984, and very quickly it came up, the AIDS epidemic. Okay, so that's really interesting. If you do some digging and if you do some research into that, you'll find that uh, Dr. Fauci had quite um, a connection with the AIDS epidemic. And you'd have to do quite a bit of research and quite a bit of digging in places like BitChute and Rumble and other type websites in order to find what were some of the lies that may have been being spread at that time. Let's go back again. Let's see if we can find another one. I, I hardly had to do any work. It was quite extraordinary. Every time I went back 18 years and I just did a little bit of a Google search. So I found another one, 1965 and 1966. What do we have then? Well, the Vietnam War. And in 1965, America had their largest anti-war protest in Washington DC. So, you know, I, I feel like the people felt that, you know, we're, we're being lied to and we don't want to do this war. We don't want our taxpayer dollars going into something that we don't want, we don't approve of, we don't believe in. This is not us, this is not humanity, you know. Um, so it, it's pretty incredible that yeah, every, every time I went back to Rahu in Taurus, I was able to find some kind of massive event that really was just a collection of lies, you know. Um, the next part that I want to take a look at is will the truth come out? Yes, I absolutely do think, and we've just got a short amount of time here. I want to keep this video nice and short. Will the truth come out? Yes, it will. I do believe it will. Now, one thing I've been thinking about is that it won't, it will take time and it won't come out 100%. And this is because of Ketu. Ketu is a suppression energy that is always on. Okay, so the truth is never going to come out 100% here on the earth plane of duality. We're never going to have it 100%. But I do think that this time where the atmosphere is thick with lies, it's going to come to an end and things will be known. It, it will come out, the truth will come out, it has to. In terms of upcoming dates, I heard recently, I was listening to some people who were not astrologers, but they were speculating about the 22nd of August, that some big truth is going to come out. Who knows, maybe. Uh, and they were also speculating that in the months to come, there are going to be massive truths that come out. I do think that, you know, with Ketu in Scorpio, the, what, what is the quality of the truth? What is the nature of the truth that's going to come out? I think it could be, it could run really deep and it could be really shocking. 
Okay, so the truth could be massive, it could be run really deep and be really shocking and be really big. And I've got the note here, the, the, the truth will either be huge and deep during Ketu and Scorpio or not at all. This can be a time that if, you know, Rahu and Ketu keep moving along, things can go so deep into Scorpio that they're never found out. You know, that the, the bottomless depths of Scorpio, the still waters that run deep, you know, there, there, there's always this thing of, you know, there's something there, but you can't quite get to it. It's very frustrating. Um, so it's, it's possible that things just get stuffed so deep that, that, that they don't emerge. But equally, I do think that truths that do get revealed at this time would be pretty profound and amazing. I also think that when Rahu goes into Aries and Ketu in Libra, that perhaps much more truth will come to light there. And perhaps people will be more ready for big truths. I'm not sure, but I, I feel like Ketu in Libra will be better somehow for, for the truth to come out. I'm going to put some dates up on the screen as to when I think uh, it might be possible for some big truths to be revealed at, around that time. I think I was looking earlier and it was something like March 2022, something like that. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But one thing I love about astrology is that it shows us that these things have happened before and it shows us that there's a time limit that you know it's not going to be like this forever, that things are going to change, that the truth does get revealed, that people do evolve. You know, we are evolving and yeah, I think this is just an absolutely extraordinary time. So guys, I'm going to leave this video there. I hope it's been interesting food for thought, just something to think about. And this is something I just wanted to add to what I'd already spoken about some time ago about Rahu being in Taurus. But if you enjoyed this video, uh, please do let me know in the comments below. I hope to get back to you when I can. I know I'm a bit behind on comments at the moment, but uh, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.